Tónaiste, I don't need to remind you about the huge hardship and sacrifice the huge numbers of people have undergone as a result of the COVID pandemic. Um, and with the dull motion People Before Profit are putting tonight, uh, we are proposing uh, that for many of those who have made that sacrifice, suffered that stress and anxiety and hardship, we need to offer them uh, a better future uh, as we move out of COVID, uh, and in particular in the area of education and access uh, to higher and further level education and to apprenticeships. That is critical for the 80,000 uh, people who have applied just recently to the CAO, uh, the Leaving Cert students and so on. It is uh, critical uh, to the tens of thousands of people in third level who have seen their education experience greatly diminished over the last year. It is critical to thousands and thousands of people who may have to reskill and retrain because their livelihoods have been decimated as a result of the pandemic. And I would say it is absolutely critical for the ability of our society to thrive and prosper uh, after COVID-19 socially uh, and economically. Uh, but it seems to me, uh, Tornishta, that uh, we are not offering that better future for all of those people uh, as we move out of COVID. Rather, we are putting uh, multiple obs obstacles and hurdles in the way of them accessing higher and further education and apprenticeships and being able to actually complete uh, their education to the highest uh, possible level. Uh, so, 80,000 people will apply for the CAO. 25,000 of them will be disappointed and potentially demoralised because we don't provide enough places uh, in higher and further education and uh, apprenticeships. Uh, our third level students and our postgrads uh, are suffering the highest fees anywhere in the European Union now that the UK uh, has left. Many of our postgraduate students are living in absolute poverty on miserable stipends and suffering uh, extortionate uh, fees. Many of those who want to return to education are blocked uh, from doing so because of high fees uh, and the cost uh, of uh, accessing uh, further education later in life uh, because they want to reskill or retrain. Uh, now, you have uh, put in a counter motion to our motion. But I would appeal to you to withdraw it and to say this is the time for courage, for vision and for payback uh, for people looking for a future on the other side of COVID. So we're asking you to say we're going to allow open access to third level higher and apprenticeship Thank you. Uh, education, Thank you, uh, to scrap the fees that make life so difficult Thank for our students uh, and to give uh, so scrap the fees and give decent supports Deputy, to people in postgrad uh, education who are trying to, to do the research that we need uh, so much more Deputy, after the thank COVID you. Thank crisis. You. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. First of all, at the outset, I want to say that uh, the government is uh, committed to education and to improving education in Ireland at all levels uh, over the course of the next few years. Uh, education is the great leveller. Uh, it raises people up. Uh, gives people opportunities, uh, allows them to learn more and earn more uh, and to build a better life for themselves and for their children. And that's why I've been proud to be uh, a member of governments that introduced uh, two years of free preschool education for all children. Um, investment at that age gives you the best return and I'm really gl glad that we prioritised that. Uh, and to have been a member of governments uh, that ensured that more people now access further education and higher educa education than was ever the case before. Uh, and from more diverse backgrounds than was ever the case before. And, I, and I, I'm glad that I had the privilege to be part of governments that achieved that. Uh, and as you know, we're investing uh, in apprenticeships now, um, increasing the number of apprenticeships and the different types of apprenticeships. And we're now offering employers uh, further incentives to take uh, uh, apprentices on. Uh, and that's what we're actually doing. Um, but we can only do things that are realistic, that are practical and that are affordable. Um, while I understand uh, the motives behind your motion tonight, uh, I can certainly see how uh, they would be very appealing. Uh, I'm not sure they're very realistic to abolish the Leaving Cert, to abolish fees, to give everyone access to any course that they want. Um, I just don't think that's practical. Um, 
I think not having a leaving cert, after having some form of assessment um, at the end of school uh, would create huge difficulties. Um, I don't know how we sustainably fund uh, third level education and higher education is the quality we'd like to. Uh, and also as well, um, to the extent that countries have attempted to use open access uh, like Italy, you end up with very high dropout rates uh, and that's not desirable either as well. Once, once upon a time, Tornishta, it was considered unthinkable that there would be open access to secondary education. We would now look back and say, what a monstrous idea that we would ration or limit the number of places available in secondary education. It is just as irrational uh, and frankly lacking in vision to, un to believe that we should still ration or limit access to higher and further education for the benefit of the, of the people who wish to do so, but for our, uh, for our uh, society uh, as a whole. Uh, and it is not the case uh, that uh, we have done what we should do uh, in terms of investment in higher education. In fact, uh, we have 50% uh, of lecturing staff in this country are on part-time and temporary contracts. 35% of lecturers. Postgrads are living in poverty. The dropout rate in this country is terrible. One sixth of all first years in higher education do drop out. An NUIG survey of students uh, in thank, NUIG thank you, found a third of students thank are you, suffering Deputy. from depression. Thank you, Deputy Gurmog. Because we are not actually supporting our students De uh, to access thank higher you. and further education and to be able to sustain thank you, themselves. Tarnish the to respond. Tarnish the to respond. Thank you. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. You know, vision is one thing. Um, and I think everyone in this house shares a vision uh, about ed education. Uh, and I've gone through some of the things that we've done uh, to widen access to education and improve education in recent years. But there is a difference between vision and practical action. Uh, and practical action requires more than a one page or two page motion. If you're going to abolish the leaving cert, you have to set out what system of assessment you'd put in its place so that people can actually judge for themselves whether that will be better or not. If you're going to abolish fees, you have to calculate how much it's going to cost, how you would fund it at a time when we know we're already borrowing 19,000 million euros a year. Um, that's not sustainable. So you need to show how you would reduce that deficit and then also find the additional money to do other things. And if you're going to have open access to third level education, allowing people to study whatever course they want, you need to show how you'd find the labs, how you'd find the anatomy rooms, how you'd find the dentist chairs, uh, how you'd find the practical placements uh, on which apprenticeships, apprentices would take part. And that seems to be very absent uh, from what you put forward tonight.